dear students writing for academic and professional success in the subject le ancham module adin rendam bhagathana nammal innu class edukkunnathu kaiya class le nammal chodyangal thannirunnu google form ilude ningalil adhiga perum adu cheyidittunde korcha aalukal maatram cheyanunde avarum ithrayum pettonu cheyidu adu poorthiyaakanam ennu arikkunnu so unit 5 vocabulary and grammar for academic writing vocabulary and grammar for academic writing second part the first topic is completeness of a sentence completeness of a sentence is necessary for academic writing then what is a sentence a sentence is a group of words arranged properly to make a sense it is the basic unit of language it starts with a capital letter and ends with a full stop exclamation or a question mark a sentence contains a subject and a verb then what is sentence sentence is a group of words arranged properly to make a sense when we read this word it make a sense it is the basic unit of language it is start with capital letter and ends with a full stop exclamation or question mark start with a capital letter and with a full stop exclamation mark or a question mark a sentence contains subject and verb the preliminary thing is that a subject uh, sorry a sentence contains a subject and a verb then what is clause clause contain a subject and predicate predicate clause contains a subject and predicate what is subject we know subject is who is doing the act or who, who who is doing the action and what is predicate predicate is other than subject what is other than a subject in a sentence is predicate for example rama killed ravana rama is subject killed ravana is predicate and it is the smallest grammatical unit that can express a complete proposition an independent clause or a group of words that can stand alone as an independent thought is complete sentence then there are two types of clauses independent and dependent what is independent clause a group of words that can stand alone as an independent thought is a complete sentence a complete sentence is independent thought independent clause a group of words which uh, which gives a complete mean or complete which gives which is a complete sentence is independent clause whereas independent clause does not make complete sentence so it cannot stand alone dependent clause stand alone could not stand alone but independent clause stand alone their dependent clause is also called subordinate clause dependent clause is also called subordinate clause for example when i was at school when i was at school this is not complete when i was at school it it is not complete we are waiting for another subject or another sentence when i was at the school dash we are waiting we are waiting for uh, the rest of the part the rest part of the sentence so it is not complete it is dependent sentence so there are two clauses dependent and independent so while we are writing an academic text it is necessary to diverse uh, diversify our sentences diversified sentences means to use different types of sentences there are three types of sentences first simple sentence compound sentence complex sentences simple sentences means which contains only one independent clause simple sentence simple sentence is one independent clause for example i am going to school compound sentence with two independent clauses or simple sentences two simple sentence or two independent clauses two independent clauses means for example i am going to school he is going to market i am going to school and he is going to market there are two independent sentences i am going to school first independent sentence he is going to market 
second independent clauses i am going to school and he is independent uh, he is going to market and third one complex sentence one independent clause and one more dependent clause one independent clause one more dependent clauses when i am going to school he is going to market when i am going to school it is dependent yan school ilekku pogumbol it is dependent it is not full it is not complete we are waiting for the next sentence when i am going to school he is going to market then it is complete so in in, in complex sentences there are one complete sentence and one incomplete sentence and compound complex sentence the third fourth one compound complex sentences two more independent clauses and one more dependent clauses in compound complex sentences two or more independent clauses and one more independent clauses when i am going to school he is going to market and she is going to theater when i am going to school he is going to market she is and she is going to uh, theater when i am going to school is dependent clause he is going to market and she is going to theater these two sentences are independent clauses so in compound complex sentences there are two main clauses and one dependent clause and in different types of sentences in different lengths will avoid monotony if you are using different types of sentences it will make diversity in your text academic text the next fragments a fragment is an incomplete sentence or disconnected piece of the main clause it usually happens when a subject or a verb is absent in a, in a sentence you have to link the same to an adjoining sentence to complete it a fragment sentence is, sentence is incomplete sentence it is not incomplete or disconnected piece of a main clause it is a disconnected piece of a main clause it usually happens when a subject or a verb is absent in a sentence when a subject or a verb is absent in a subject uh, in a sentence it occurs for example she goes to market returns and went to she goes to market returns and uh, sleeps she goes to market returns and sleeps returns she returns she re, which means she returns returns it is incomplete she returns she we, we use as she returns but in a sentence there is no she so she goes to market returns and sleeps she sleeps so it is incomplete it is fragment we are using this fragment sentences in our conversation style but it is avoided in academic text in a conversation fragments are necessary but they are not acceptable in converse, in, in academic writing in in our side there is there is a mistake in the last sentence not acceptable in a academic writing next subject verb agreement the most important aspect of a sentence is subject verb agreement the basic rule is that they should agree in number fatima goes to market fatima goes to market fatima goes i go to market they go to market she goes there is a subject verb agreement when the subject is singular verb is singular goes when the subject is plural they the market uh, they go they go to market go is also plural then what is subject verb agreement is what subject verb agreement is if the subject is plural the verb also is to be plural and if the subject is singular the verb also is to be plural a singular subject takes a singular verb and a plural subject always takes a plural subject while writing a simple sentence it is easy to arrange the subject verb agreement but it is difficult sorry 
but it, but it is difficult to handle with it while you are using compound subjects indefinite 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 pronouns collective nouns inverted subjects if you are using compound subject in definite pronouns collective nouns it is uh, very it is not easy to use subject verb agreement so subject verb agreement is very necessary in an academic text next consistent use of tenses always it is better to keep the tenses consistent in your formal writing in our formal writing academic writing it is necessary it is expected to use consistent style of style in our tenses it adds a readability of the text consistent means we are using the same tense in in our narration in in, in our text if we are using simple tense simple present tense it should be uh, the, 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 there we avoid simple past in other text we are using the same tense for example if you are if you if you are in a narration if you are narrating the events if you are narrating the story we are using past tense it occurred in the past so we are using past tense we will not use present tense but if you are reviewing a text if you are reviewing a film if you are reviewing a book we are using simple present tense so consistency in tense is necessary consistency is tense is necessary for narrative style of writing consistent use of past tense is appropriate while present tense is appropriate in an analysis of some writers and work and others if we are analyzing the um, coronavirus pandemic and and we are writing an essay an academic essay on the topic we are using simple present tense present tense now we are living in this pandemic situation so we are using this tense so consistency in using tense is necessary while we are writing a, a an academic text next parallelism parallelism is the use of con components in a sentence that are grammatically the same or similar in their construction sound and meaning because of the repetition the idea is conveyed deeply and properly and also it adds the flow of the text parallelism means use of components in a sentence that are grammatically the same we are using words which is grammatically same or similar in their construction sound and meaning in their construction in their sound they are similar in their meaning also we are using it to ensure the mean, ensure to represent the meaning because of the repetition the idea is conveyed deeply and properly we are repeating the words repeating the meaning so the idea is conveyed properly to the audience or to the readers and also it adds the flow of the text example the poem is lyrical long interesting and meaningful the poem is lyrical the poem is long the poem is interesting the poem is meaningful but we are using the poem is lyrical long interesting and meaningful it is the parallel use of words it is parallelism it will improve the readability of your work next word in us wordiness is avoid should be avoided in our academic and formal writing what is wordiness wordiness is one of the most common mistakes in academic writing in formal writing wordiness refers to the imperfection caused by the cause of more words than the meaning demands the words we are we are using more words than the meaning demands that is imperfection in our formal writing that is known as wordiness imperfectness caused by using words than the meaning demands is wordiness and it is also imperfect in our academic writing wordiness is one of the barriers of communication wordiness is also one of the barriers of communication and it is not uh, expected to use in our academic writing and how to avoid wordiness 
how can we you, uh, uh, avoid our weariness in our sentences it is better to make another person read your work to trace out the errors in order to improve the quality of your work use the language of your discipline replace stock phrases with on word equivalence it, uh, how can we, how we can avoid the wordiness in our sentence avoid wordiness in our sentence the first thing is that the the first point we should analyze we, we, we should we, we should remember in our mind is that it is better to make another person read your work to trace out the errors when we complete our writing we share our text to another person and it is better to trace our mistakes we should not the other person may know the other person may find the mistake that we have done so we have to share our material to other person because other to our friends and peer reviewers and also to subject experts they may read our material text and they correct the mistakes that we have done and also another thing is that we should use the language used in our discipline in which discipline we are writing the academic writing the text in 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 which in which subject we are writing the subject in, in, we are writing the text in which discipline we are writing the this uh, we are writing the text is more important if i am writing a scientific text there are many jargons many phrases idioms which is used in science it is necessary to use that words and if i am writing an literary analysis or literary criticism or uh, critical analysis of a literary text i should use the words that is you connected to that literary work or literature or theories and jargons or or the subject or the idioms used in literature and each and every di discipline has its own phrases words and it is necessary to use that words replace stock phrases with on word equivalence strong uh, stock phrases with uh, one word equivalence uh, there may be one word equivalence for long words for example the phrase if he, i am he is aware of the fact that he is aware of the fact that is a long word and we can use the simple word he knows he knows and avoid redundant expressions redundancy we yesterday in the last class we discussed what is redundancy redundancy means using the same words repeated words same words which is giving same meaning we are uh, it is necessary to avoid this redundant expressions and avoid sentences sentence openers like it there is like that it is to be like that uh, there is something like that uh, we avoid this word avoid weak and very words weak words avoid weak words use strong words and very verbs very verbs means it is very verbosity is there we we avoid it that is the use of that which it it, it will make complexity it will make that which uh, these sentences make complexity in your in our expressions and it is necessary to avoid it eliminate unnecessary qualifiers and intensifiers eliminate avoid unnecessary adverbs adjectives qualifiers intensifiers we avoid it and avoid words like very quiet just simply you simplify your sentence structures simplify your sentence structures avoid very just quiet like that words and if you are writing like this uh if you are if you if you are careful about our academic text our formal text uh, it will be a good text it will be approach approachable to all the persons and it is also appreciable 
so uh, take care of this points that I reminded you and this is the end of the chapter fifth and we will see with another chapter thank you